Everybody ready? Yes, sir. We all thank you for coming. What a, what a great, distinguished group here. We are here to announce the launch of Farm and Forest Recovery Resource Days and an additional way to provide for our agriculture community. Uh, as you know, we've been through a, a storm, uh, another storm, Helene, that did a lot of damage. And we, we made a, have a lot of resources that are addressed to that kind of damage. But under the, the, the system we have, the federal system, we've, we've noticed that all of there are a lot of resources, there are gaps in that system. And so this today is to be sure that all of the people in that community and everybody associated with them know what resources are available in the federal as well as the state system. But of course the federal system is the one that has the money. And we want to be sure that we take advantage of all of those resources to help our farms and forests. And we have, I think we have 24, 24,000 farms in South Carolina, something like that, and lots of acres of forests. But the hurricane dealt a severe blow to our agricultural industry. Catastrophic winds, flooding, prolonged power outages cause extensive damage to livestock equipment, timberland, infrastructure. Many farms have been left incapacitated with downed trees, impassable roads, and other storm-related challenges, making recovery efforts even more difficult. And as you know, one thing about farms, you have livestock, you have things living. It's not just buildings, it's things that need to be kept alive. Poultry, all sorts of animals, crops can be damaged as well by drought. We had one of those too just before we had this. And then we had hur hur the uh, Hurricane Debbie that came along and this came along. So there are three in a row and that really put a hurting on us when farmers and foresters were already stretched because of the economic situation in the country and a lot of the inflation. But the, we had trees going down that because the soil was so wet, trees went down and not only knocked down the power lines, usually a limb will knock down a line, but the tree will knock down the whole pole. So we had people without electricity for a long time and in the, in the forestry and in the, in the farm community, that is a triple disaster because you have to have uh, electricity. You remember we had filling stations, convenience stores that couldn't pump gas because they didn't have any electricity. That was something that we, we don't see very often. But similar to our South Carolina County days, this Farm and Forest Recovery Resource Day will assist our farming and forestry communities as they continue to recover by doing what we did with the county days for everybody else, and that is offer a one-stop shop. We'll have them in three locations, three days, where the, all the farmers, the foresters, everybody that is connected with those industries, which is the biggest industry in our state. That's the biggest one, followed by at manufacturing and tourism. But if, if the agribusiness industry in South Carolina goes, then we're all gone. So we have to be sure to protect that. So that's what we're doing. These days, we'll have everybody there. And we got this idea with Brett Howard from FEMA when we were working on that around the clock. And he had helped organize such an event in Florida previously. FEMA does not deal directly with farms and foresters deal with everything else in providing funds. But they know how to organize and they did that in Florida. So he has helped us and brought his team to help us organize all of our team and everybody's on it to be present at those three locations to provide whatever information and assistance, help with filling out forms and getting information for our, that community, all of those families. November 15th at USC Aiken, from 2 to 7 o'clock. November 21, Greenville Technical College from 2 to 7. And December the 6th, at South Carolina Farm View Federation annual meeting, which will be in Myrtle Beach from 9 to 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And also, I have written a letter delivered today to our congressional delegation asking for help. The relief funds and assistance provided for farmers and forests 
are scattered about in various places, and fortunately, we know where they are, but they don't communicate, collaborate, and cooperate as much as they should, or as quickly as they should, although we have a, we have a great team accessing those resources. But what we want to do is something a little more akin to what we do with FEMA, and that is have somebody directing money, direct aid to our farmers and foresters. And so we're asking for a direct appropriation, asked for it today, of $621 million emergency relief package to be structured as a block grant, allowing the South Carolina Department of Agriculture to efficiently manage and deploy those resources and thereby avoid the delays that are incumbent in trying to go to 99 different groups, 99 different places. So we thank you for being here, and I say we got the whole team with us. This is, a, this is the first time we've done something quite like this, and we think it'll work very well. And again, we got great people in South Carolina, we have great assets, and we need to protect the agribusiness industry in South Carolina because it is powerful, it is great, it is growing, and it affects us all and keeps us all moving. I'd like to ask several people to speak. The first would be Commissioner Weathers. Thank you, Governor. And on behalf of agriculture in South Carolina, I just want to thank you for your leadership uh, to put these uh, farm and forestry resource centers together. Uh, just your leadership has always been there for uh, agriculture. Requesting the funds to help South Carolina farmers is a great step. Uh, bringing it to the Department of Agriculture, I'll take you back nine years when we had the, fl the first flood of the century, didn't we have two in a row? Um, the legislature that was passed to give farmers some help, those dollars came to the responsibility of the Department of Agriculture to disperse them. So that was done in a four, less than four months time. Uh, at that time, it was uh, the crop losses were 300 and something million, and as we'll talk here, these losses are greater uh, than that. But thank you for your leadership, Government Master. Um, we are here because of Hurricane Helene, but 2024 has been a challenging year for South Carolina farmers with the disasters. We all recall the drought in July. That impact was over $31 million for farmers and their crops. Tropical Storm Debbie in August had $133 million of crop and livestock loss with just under $5 million in infrastructure. And then along comes Helene with $65 million in crop and livestock loss and $193 million in infrastructure loss. And Thanks to Clemson University for helping us pull those numbers together. And these are direct crop values. This is not the impact on South Carolina's economy, which will be much greater than that because, as the governor said, agribusiness is our state's largest industry. And when the production of crops is diminished, then it impacts those uh, economies as well. As the governor has already indicated, we will request uh, the funding assistance from Washington. We have been in conversations with our delegation members, as well as uh, folks at USDA to talk about the process, really to identify gaps in the current program and portfolio of programs. So we want to make sure, for example, let's take uh, pecan farmers, uh, their trees uh, could be covered the crop that they lost is covered, but the income uh, that they'll miss for five to six years while those trees come back into production, there's not a coverage for that. So those types of gaps we want to address. I'll tell you, why we uh, here almost two months later, you know, it's hard to get farmers to stop repairing what they've had damaged to tell us what got damaged. So, uh, and I, as we were making those phone calls, more than one farmer said to us, if I qualify for a dollar, send it to my neighbor in North Carolina. So that's the type of folks that we get to deal with, and that is the backbone of South Carolina's agricultural economy. So those losses add up to, as the governor said, $621 million. I think uh, Forrester Phillips will speak to the uh, 
timber portion of that and the impact on the forestry industry. Good afternoon. I'm Scott Phillips, State Forester, Director of the South Carolina Forestry Commission. Um, I, I want to echo Hugh's comments. Uh, the governor is a fantastic leader and always leads out on agribusiness, which includes agriculture and forestry. He's always been such a great supporter of that, especially in times of disaster like this. And right now, we're at a point of crisis in the state of South Carolina. Uh, after these storms and all the different things that have hit our state this year, uh, within forestry, we've had a, a terrible last 24 months. Uh, we've had three pulp mills closed here within the state of South Carolina. Uh, that's reduced markets quite substantially. Several other sawmills have closed within the state. Um, a lot of that's due to economic conditions and other factors that are out there, but that's being exacerbated by Hurricane Helene and the damage we just suffered uh, basically from Aiken through the upstate into North Carolina. Uh, over 210,000 acres of forest were damaged by Hurricane Helene here within our state. 78% uh, of that uh, land that was damaged belongs to private individuals, people like you and me, that own that land. And uh, Commissioner Weathers mentioned gaps. Uh, there's, when you start looking at forest landowners and forest-based businesses uh, here within the state of South Carolina and nationally, uh, they don't have the same safety gaps. They don't have crop insurance like uh, Commissioner Weather was talking about that helps cover some of those losses for farmers. Um, forest landowners don't have that. Their only opportunity is to take a tax deduction under casualty laws. Uh, and they can only take that deduction if they have a basis. And those basis are usually already used up for, for those landowners. And so it's just a direct loss uh, to those landowners. When that timber breaks and hits the ground, um, timber that was worth $40 a ton uh, yesterday, today is worth $5 a ton if they can get it salvaged. Um, and as I said before, the mill closures that we have, have had in our state are exacerbating the situation much less of the timber that's on the ground will be uh, salvaged this time because of the market conditions here within our state. Uh, so uh, overall, $194 million impact to forestry in the state of South Carolina. Um, $83 million of that is direct timber losses for, for landowners. Uh, $51 million of that is impacts to forest-based businesses like our loggers. Uh, our loggers are another segment of our economy we really need to be thinking about right now, and they don't have safety measures. They work from paycheck to paycheck, week to week, to cover the cost. You know, you're looking at most loggers to set up a, a first business is a $5 million investment to establish that business. And most of that is very intensive capital costs. And they've got to work very hard, long hours each week to be able to cover the payments on that equipment. And uh, on average during Helene, uh, those, those businesses weren't able to work for two and a half days. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you start looking at it, it's about 1% of their total uh, output for the year. Uh, uh, in those two and a half days. Some of those businesses couldn't operate for 10 plus days because roads were closed, mills were closed because of power outages. And so um, I'm very um, appreciative of Governor McMaster's leadership in seeking gap funding to assist forest landowners, uh, our um, logging, forest-based businesses, logging businesses uh, is one of those types of businesses uh, here within the state of South Carolina. Uh, to help cover that loss in, in revenue that they saw during that period of time. Uh, we haven't done this in South Carolina before, and I greatly appreciate your leadership, Governor, uh, on that front. Um, you know, and we'll support you any way we can as we go through that. So I'll stop my comments there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Federal Administrator, Brett Howard. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the promotion there. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I'm Brett Howard. I'm the Federal Coordinating Officer. Uh, here for Hurricane Helene for South Carolina, and it's my pleasure and my team's honor to to work side by side with the state, with the governor, <clears throat> in helping and all the leaders that are here in helping South Carolina recover for the devastation left by Hurricane Helene. And you've heard from the first two speakers that um, the governor's leadership. <clears throat> I've been here since the storm hit, and I've witnessed it firsthand. And you, many of you that have been part of the um, the media that have covered the governor's press conferences has heard me say that before. But on the forestry piece and the, the farm piece, we were what, maybe two weeks into response, maybe maybe shorter than that, but somewhere around the two week mark, the governor started calculating it, 
this is really impacting our farmers. We got to figure out what we're going to do. And so it, his leadership really started early in this. He recognized it right off. And so, um, you know, my hats are off to that. Our, at FEMA, and, and we really understand the importance of the agriculture community in this region. It is the lifeblood of this state. It's the lifeblood of our nation. If farmers don't work, we don't eat. It's that simple. And I'm excited to be part of this effort. I grew up in Alabama. I grew up on a farm. My father farmed. My wife uh, is the third generation farmer. Her father farmed and grandfather and grandfather and a great grandfather. And so I understand, I, I do. And I've been out and I have seen, I've met with farmers here and I've seen the impacts. I've seen the devastation. Uh, and I, I'm gonna get this right, Governor. Pecan farmers, we call them pecans in Alabama, but I have been educated in South Carolina. They're pecans. Um, Right now, currently, I've got over 750 federal uh, staff on the ground, 600 of those are FEMA, uh, about 100, and the remainder, 150 or so, are from other federal agencies that are here to help uh, make sure that we deliver the assistance the state has uh, requested. And I'm going to say something here. My role as a federal coordinator, even though I've got a, a FEMA badge on here, I'm appointed as the federal coordinating officer, which means I coordinate the, the federal government's response and recovery to a disaster. So I can bring in, and I have the authority to bring in other federal agencies to act, and I can coordinate what they do and operate within this disaster. Some come under the own, their own authorities. Some we request to bring in and coordinate in special incidents like this and setting up these farm recovery offices. So in my capacity, I'm able to call upon the USDA. And they're more than willing partner to come in and help and build out these recovery centers. And I do, and I told the, the governor early on that I understand that the FEMA programs are not, are not necessarily responsive in all the aspects for, the, for our farmers and our, our timber industry and agriculture uh, in general. Ours are set up really to help the farmers with their house. We don't, we don't have anything to do with crop insurance or fixing, you know, paying for a tractor or a fence or a grain, uh, grain silo or anything like that, but our federal partners do. And so in setting up and, and, and coming up with this and partnering with the federal team and the state team, this is a whole community, a whole of government approach to help the farmers. Everybody has come together working tirelessly side by side to make this day and, and the day that we're going to open the first center happen to to bring in our partners from the USDA and I'm bringing in any federal agency that has any program that uh, touches farmers. We want, as the governor said, to make this a one-stop shop for our farmers, to, to give them what they need to, to help them in their recovery because they are very unique in their needs and each farmer is a little bit different. And we understand that, and so we want to meet them, be able to talk to them face to face, be able to sit down and give them the paperwork, show them what they need to do and how they need to do to help them economically uh, recover from from this devastating disaster. And you've heard the the numbers here, and they're they're tremendously large. And they talk about the gaps. These are generational gaps in some of this: the timber industry, the pecan industry. Those trees take, four, those pecan trees that were lost were 40 and 70 years old. You can't restore them tomorrow. So this is a generation. Some of these farmers, this was their children's livelihood that are going to be coming up. So this is a generational thing to keep this going and to rebuild this. And so I, in closing, I am pleased to, uh, to know that South Carolina, I want you all to know that South Carolina is a priority for FEMA, the federal government, and our federal partners and you have FEMA's commitment and my personal commitment that and my team's commitment that to, we will be here as long as it takes to get this community back on its feet and and going again and thank you Governor McMasters for the invitation to join you here today for this announcement thank you all thank you, Governor. Good Good afternoon, my name is Laurie Slade Funderburg. I'm the State Executive Director for the Farm Service Agency here in South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Governor, for inviting Farm Service Agency to be a part of this um, important press conference today. USDA Farm Service Agency is glad to be a partner in the farm and forest 
recovery resource days and to put information in the farmers' hands about the disaster programs that the Farm Service Agency offers. For our farmers and forest landowners listening, FSA has a variety of programs to help your farm or forest operation recover from recent hurricanes. The Farm Service Agency is ready to assist impacted producers, and USDA has authorized flexibility for disaster assist assistance programs to streamline the recovery process to help farmers get the help they need under our programs. FSA disaster programs can help with the cost associated with debris removal, land rehabilitation, and animal crop and tree losses. This includes repairs to fields, fences, and private forests. For the farmers impacted by yesterday's rain and flooding in Orangeburg and surrounding areas, I have already received assurance that from the National Office that this assistance will also be available to you. If you have a marketing assistance loan or a farm storage facility loan with FSA, USDA has provided flexibilities within these programs to assist you. In addition to FSA disaster programs, all qualified farm operators in designated counties in South Carolina are eligible for emergency loans to help recover from production and physical losses, provided eligibility requirements are met. The current interest rate for an emergency loan is 3.75%. We have had several disaster designations in South Carolina this year, from the drought to Debbie to Helene. So all counties in South Carolina have a disaster designation that allows farmers to apply for an emergency loan based on the disaster for the designation issued. Farmers in eligible counties have eight months from the date of the disaster designation to apply for loans to help cover all or part of their actual losses. FSA will consider each loan application on its merits, taking into account the extent of losses, security available, and repayment ability. For those who have experienced drought this year, the Livestock Forage Disaster Program offers financial support to livestock producers who have grazing losses due to qualifying drought conditions. LFP provides critical financial assistance to help producers cover additional feed costs and mitigate the economic impact of forage losses. Many counties in the PD qualify for this from the drought in the summer, as do the counties in the upstate due to the drought conditions in the winter. Only producers in the counties that have been approved for LFP can apply. Deadline is January 30th, 2025. Another important deadline for producers in counties affected by Hurricane Helene is November 15th for EQIP applications. And this is with our sister agency, Natural, uh, NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation Service. Documentation is important. Please document your damage and what you're doing in your cleanup process or repairs to ensure that you get the full assistance you deserve. Take pictures of the losses and keep any receipts, records of expenses and, and labor. We understand that these have been extremely um, extenuating and stressful circumstances and that there may be instances where documentation is not possible. Regardless, we at FSA will do what we can to help you access the assistance you need. When you are ready, we are here and ready to assist. You must contact your local FSA office to report all crop, livestock, and farm infrastructure damages and losses. Representatives from FSA will be attending the Farm and Forest Recovery Resource Days to provide you with information on these programs and provide you with the contact information for your local FSA office to start the application process. You can also visit farmers.gov for more information on USDA disaster assistance. Just like each agency that is represented here today, FSA is dedicated to helping our farmers and foresters recover as best we can from the disasters that have impacted South Carolina agriculture so mightily this year. 
The programs I've mentioned are only a few of the broader suite of crop, livestock, and infrastructure disaster recovery programs we have to offer. So whether you're a regular customer or maybe you've never conducted business with FSA before, please start the recovery process by reaching out to the dedicated employees at your local USDA service center to determine which programs meet your unique recovery needs, discuss eligibility, and apply for assistance. Thank you. Well, that's the prepared uh, presentations. Does anyone have a question for anyone? Because we got the whole team here. Sure. Uh, this storm is very different than Hurricane Hugo, which made direct impact on the coast. Hurricane Hugo. Uh, was a billion dollar damage to the forest industry when it came on shore. Um, massive destruction throughout that area. Uh, Hurricane Helene, you know, fortunately that storm come on in the Big Bend area of, of, of Florida and came up across Georgia, then into South Carolina. Uh, the damage across South Carolina is very variable. Uh, you got uh, a lot of light or moderate damage throughout the 20 county area that it impacted here within the state. Uh, but you also have many landowners that, that receive catastrophic damage. Uh, you know, they had their, their child's college savings in that stand of trees, and now all those trees are on the ground blown over and all that, va that value is evaporated from those stands. So we're estimating about 17,000 acres uh, will need to be reforested uh, from this storm uh, here in the state. But like I said, uh, it's, a, it's a very different um, type of damage than Hurricane Hugo. Anybody else on that? My, my bet is that the, farm, the people that work on the farms and in forests don't complain much about anything. So my bet is this 691 million we, we've referenced so far is uh, very, very conservative. More questions? Governor, did you your budget The first thing we will do is see that we get every we have access to every dollar that we've already been paying into the federal government for all these years in federal relief funds. That's, that's the first step. And then we'll, we'll see what else we need to do, but that's the first place we need to go. Any more questions? I'm, I probably I will likely recommend a sum of money, maybe up to a hundred million or so for this, but it might not be that much, but we need to, to exhaust the federal resources first because we got a lot of other things that we need to spend our taxpayer money in South Carolina on. More questions for anybody? <laughs> 